Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another review. And today, I'll be covering the Blink Sync Module 2, and more specifically, what this magical little USB-A port is used for on the side of the module. Now, I've already done a full review of the Sync Module 2, and I get a lot of questions about what the differences are between the Sync Module 1 and the Sync Module 2. And really what it comes down to is a little better Wi-Fi connection on the Sync Module 2 and the addition of this port, which allows you to now store locally your video recordings on an external thumb drive. Now, the way it stores those videos is where it gets confusing because it really depends on whether you have a subscription for the cloud storage or you don't. And the way it stores those videos is different depending on those two scenarios. So I'll explain those in a minute. But I thought I'd start with an unboxing of the product in case this is your first time looking at this. So essentially what the Sync module does is create a collection point for up to 10 cameras that connect to the Sync module and then it connects to your local network. And that's an advantage because a lot of the home automation and a lot of the home cameras have their own connection to your Wi-Fi network. And the challenge there is that seems like a great idea, but you only have 256 locations that you can actually assign a camera or something like this to. So you can run out of locations pretty quickly if you've got a lot of home automation devices. So having a hub like this that sort of gathers up 10 cameras at a time and performs the function of handshaking with them and recording video and moving video around means it only needs one address on your home network. So it's a big advantage. Now, if you already have eight cameras and you want to add three more, you have to get a second sync module and you can add a lot of sync modules to your environment and each of those can support 10 cameras. Now, the unboxing is pretty straightforward. Inside the box, you'll find a charger. You can plug this into the wall. It's got a USB-A port on it. You'll find the new sync module. You'll find a cable that has a USB-A connection on one end and a micro USB connection on the other end. You'll plug this into the charger. This plugs into the sync module and that's all the power you'll need to operate it. And then it connects directly to your Wi-Fi network. You'll also find an instruction manual that explains how to connect it, explains a few things about it, the indicators, what they mean when they're blinking, things like that. So read through the manual. It'll give you all the details you need on the actual sync module. Now, as far as the Sync 2 module goes, again, this USB-A port on the side will support any external USB thumb drive up to 256 gigabytes in capacity. Anything over that, it can't recognize it. You also want to make sure any thumb drive you install in this has at least 350 megabytes of free space on it and that it's formatted. It has to be formatted when it goes in or you can format it in the unit, I think, through the application. But a standard thumb drive like this works just great. You'll plug it into the side of the module. And once you plug that in, the sync module now recognizes there's external storage and it knows that it can record videos there. And that can be really handy because a lot of times you'll want to review those on your computer. You unplug it, take it to your computer, you can review them. Where it gets a little bit challenging is it depends on whether you have a subscription, again, to the cloud service or you don't. Because when you first install the sync module or any camera really, Amazon has you set up uh, an account where you sign in, you log in, you add this to your account and you get 30 days of free cloud service, which gives you a great place to store your videos, review your videos, get alarms, get notifications on your phone, all the things you care about with home security. I think it's a good value. The challenge is if you have a subscription, this only acts as a backup. It's not actually recording videos to the thumb drive anymore. It's every night at a given hour, it's taking all the videos that are up in the cloud connecting to your sync drive here, your sync module, and downloading those videos to this thumb drive. So you've got to back up essentially your cloud. I don't know what that's doing for you really because the cloud is like the best place to store it because there's all kinds of disaster recovery programs up there where they're going to stay where they're at. You can access them from anywhere. So it seems a little interesting that it's only used as a backup. Where it becomes really interesting for me is if you don't have a subscription, you're actually recording the videos right to the thumb drive. And then I can pull the thumb drive out and go review those on my computer. So for me, I almost feel like if you don't have a subscription, it's a better setup than if you do have a subscription. So it's a little confusing and it may very well be something that the Blink team and Amazon work on down the road to allow you to store videos here or give you the option at least to store raw footage right on here, just like you would if you didn't have a subscription. But that's where the confusion comes in because when you first instigate it and you add an account and it's brand new, those first 30 days, you're not actually recording video to the thumb drive. You're recording it to the cloud and then nightly it's backing it up to the thumb drive. If you let that subscription expire after 30 days, you're now in an offline mode essentially. And all of a sudden you're gonna see videos recorded to your thumb drive. So depending on what you're trying to do with your cameras, you may very well wanna set some of the cameras up outside of your main account as a second account without a subscription and then record directly to the thumb drive. And the ones that you have cloud storage for, if you care about that, are on that second sign-in. So you've got two different sign-ins, one with a cloud subscription, one without a cloud subscription. That's just one way to attack it. But it does seem from my perspective to be a little bit confusing 
on why they would change that and why they wouldn't just allow you to record them with a subscription to there as an option. But anyway, I hope that clears up any confusion. I think it's a wonderful product. I've got Blink cameras all over my home. It's really easy to add an extra sync module. I've actually got three on my network right now because I have so many cameras and other devices from Blink. But it's a great product. It works really well. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. But that confusion around what that USB slot was used for was something I thought I would answer. So hopefully you found this helpful. And until next time, <laughs> stay nerdy.